Ahoy! The Shield in New World has a ton of issues. In the next patch we're going to see changes to weight loadouts potentially, to armor loadouts in some form. And before that happens I would like to talk about these issues in detail so that maybe some of these can be improved with that patch. I previously already talked about problems with the Sword and Shield's abilities and perks, but this one is specifically only about the shield. I've used Sword and Shield in all different weight loadouts, even medium, since the game first released into the open beta. Back then I thought that a lot of things about the shield especially felt very unfinished and I actually expected them to address that relatively close to release, which didn't happen, it hasn't happened until now, so it's time to shine a bit of a spotlight on them. Obviously we're also going to talk about potential solutions. The first issue most of you are probably familiar with to some extent, which is the armor rating and the weight rating. While the shield is classified as a weapon, its weight still counts towards your armor weight. This is annoying because it effectively means that for sword and shield, unless you're running heavy, you need to build a dedicated loadout that you don't need to do for any other weapon. For example, if you want to run a sword and shield in light armor, you have to run everything in light armor. You can't run a medium chest, for example, like many people would normally do and then you can only add a round shield. Once upon a time, the armor rating and stats from your shield wouldn't even transfer over when using your other weapon. That is fortunately solved at least. Now you actually get those additional stats, so you're taking the same damage even if you're using your offhand weapon. But that doesn't fully solve the problem. Look at these stats for a normal light armor set with a medium chest here. You can see that every armor piece has armor relative to its weight. So per point of weight per kilo basically you have 57.1 or 57.2 armor but that's just rounding. This brings us to a total of 726 armor which gives us 24.25% mitigation. And now let's look at a full light loadout with a round shield. What you'll notice here is that the values for the shield look very off. The shield has 2.7 weight but only provides 29.7 armor which means it only provides 11 points of armor per point of weight, way less than any of your other armor pieces do. Because of that, our armor rating is cut down to 601 and our mitigation is down to 20.94%. That would for example mean if we're using a full light set without a round shield, we would take 352 damage from a sword light attack, whereas with the round shield loadout we would take 368 damage. And obviously the more damage you take, the higher the damage is, the more the difference will be, so this quickly adds up. We can play this same game with medium armor. One of the standard medium armor loadouts is a heavy head, heavy chest, medium gloves, light legs and medium feet. The armor ratio for these items is once again the same, with the total armor being 1317 or the mitigation being 36.75%. To even get an effective medium loadout with a shield, we already need to switch pieces around in a very annoying way. So I think the most suitable loadout that is most similar to what we have here would be having a heavy head with a medium chest and then medium gloves, light legs and heavy feet or similar. Switched around here a little bit doesn't really matter. Result is we're once again taking more damage. This time our mitigation is 34.42%. You can switch around even more gear and go with a full medium except leg set and only your legs are heavy and then you go with a round shield along with that, in which case you get slightly more mitigation, 0.2%, but then you'd have to switch out even more gear and your loadout would be completely different from what you would normally run in medium. Also at this point you'd still be limited to using a round shield, maybe you would want to use a kite shield because you actually want to block. In that case your optimal loadout would probably be running full light except chest, only your chest would be heavy, which is funny in itself already and then the kite shield along with that. However, the kite shield has a higher weight rating than the round shield while still having the same armor to weight ratio of 11 armor per point of weight. So you would lose even more armor. This would cut down your mitigation to 31.86%. In other words, per light sword hit, you would take more than 20 more damage. And don't you even dare try and think outside of the box and go for a tower shield. In that case, you can only run full light with medium legs. And again, this is more weight with a worse armor rating. So now you're sitting at 777.8 armor or 25.54% mitigation. So you're losing more than 10% mitigation compared to a normal medium loadout. This would mean that any second your block isn't up, you're taking around the same damage as someone in a normal light loadout. By the way, while the shield has additional perks like Sturdy Shield and Elemental Resistance that provide you with additional mitigation that you can spec into, these perks are only active while your shield is out and not on your other weapon. 
But then you may say, hey, but in return, you're getting the ability to block with a shield and you can also block projectiles, which is true. It is a benefit. Now, I've made a little list here of all the weapons and their block stability. We have some like the fire staff with 15% or the rapier with 15%, which are not really built for blocking. No surprise there. The upper end, however, has some definite head scratches. I think the Warhammer and Great Axe are basically in a place where you'd expect blocking weapons to be. They both have 25% block stability. The Great Axe has some perks that give you extra damage after blocking, but don't reduce the stamina damage that you take or anything. Whereas the Warhammer has a 30% stamina consumption reduction against melee attacks that you can invest into. But it cannot block ranged attacks. But above that is where the absurdity begins. Why does Ice Gauntlet have 30% block stability by default? I get that you get your little ice shield when you're casting a block with it and somehow they probably lore-wise justify it that way, but it does seem a little bit absurd when you consider that this is the same block rating that the round shield has. And not only that, the Ice Gauntlet also has a perk that is better than anything the shield has for blocking, which is blocking stamina, converting 3 mana into 15 stamina, which is a completely out of proportion conversion rate. The single point is better than investing 5 defensive points into the shield somewhere. It's absolutely crazy and I am so baffled by the fact that it still exists in this form. This is part of the reason why tanks are more likely to run ice gauntlets than shields and walls now. The only downside is that this thing can't block ranged attacks. And with the greatsword we have a similar story. 34% block stability by default, higher than the round shield. It loses 10% block stability if you have the arrow deflection perk, but then you can also block ranged projectiles like the round shield while still having an overall higher block stability at that point. And if you get the Faultless Defender perk, you also have the chance to essentially double the block stability of the Greatsword on any attack that is blocked that way, and the timing isn't particularly hard to hit on many attacks. With all of that in mind, it seems extremely odd to me that you're essentially getting punished for running a round shield or a kite shield through the higher armor weight, while these other weapons have very similar, if not better, benefits when it comes to blocking. If effectively blocking attacks or blocking projectiles was such a huge advantage that it warrants an extra armor weight, then why do Ice Gauntlet and Greatsword not have the same? You could also make the argument that Sword and Shield benefits from the extra perks that you can have on your shield. What you may not be aware of is that shields are extremely limited in what you can actually get on them. There are certain perks that are in the drop or craft tables of shields and they are basically all that is allowed and they are different between the round shield, kite shield and tower shield. What exactly is allowed here seems to be extremely arbitrary. For example, you can have elemental types of conditioning on any type of shield, but you can only have a slash shield ward on a heavy shield, on a tower shield. You can craft a kite shield with refreshing move, but you cannot craft a round shield with the same perk. The newer damaging perks like thwarting strikes or elemental attunements that have been added to the game later are not craftable on shields at all. And Bane effects like Ancient Bane can actually be gotten on shields, but only from the mutations of certain expeditions and not be crafted at all. That's why named shields like Motherwell, Wisher's Coin are so sought after, because they basically have a bunch of perks that you can otherwise not get on a round shield in any way. That said, there are still a few perk combinations that can be decently strong, increase your damage in various ways, like for example if you get a shield with Enchanted and Keenly Jacked, which can be crafted. So even though the overall availability of craftable perks is most certainly scuffed and the drops aren't much better for the most part, there are options to get okay ones at least. So you could still justify the shield weight that way. The problem is that the sword and shield as a damage weapon only works with these extra perks. If you don't have these extra perks, it just falls significantly behind in damage output compared to other weapons. Essentially, the entire weapon balance is built around these extra perks existing. In fact, I don't think many Sword and Shield users would be upset if these extra perks were taken away if there were other balance adjustments made to this sword in return. So let's talk about these adjustments and solutions, because there are multiple options here even though one seems to be the glaringly obvious one. The most commonly brought up suggestion is to simply make shields operate like a weapon so that their weight isn't counted towards the overall armor weight. Weapons in New World still have weight, but it's completely ignored when they are equipped, and the same could be true for shields. This doesn't come entirely without issues though. Now, the shield user would have more armor than everyone else, whereas previously they had less. Now keep in mind, the armor from shields is actually laughably low, so this isn't as huge of a problem as it sounds like. Even if there were no additional conditions and you could just wear a tower shield and light armor, the additional armor would basically be about as much as you're currently losing by using a shield in light armor. 
But still, while running a tower shield in light would significantly decrease your DPS, the prospect of people rolling around while also having a block with 50% stability doesn't sit well with me. That is not an unsolvable problem though. One solution would be to tie the allowed shield to your weight class. So, if you're in light equip load, you can only use round shields. If you're in medium equip load, you can use round shields or kite shields. And if you're in heavy equip load, you can use all three types of shields. Alternatively, you could also allow all shields in all weight classes, so people can choose a shield with their preferred perks, but make the block stability depend on your weight class instead. So, if you're in light armor, your shield will always provide you with 30% block stability. In medium armor it's always 40%, in heavy armor it's always 50%, no matter what type of shield you're holding. Scrapping the armor rating on shields entirely is also possible, making them even more like a weapon. The only problem would be that it would slightly punish heavy armor tanks because they lose the shield rating from the tower shield. But again, that's 100 something armor. It's really not a massive amount, especially if you're running heavy armor. The block stability is what really matters. But assuming shield's weight is still counted towards your armor, I think shields should either be made significantly lighter so that they're hardly a factor in your loadout, or they should at least provide extra armor so that they match the other armor pieces in armor rating per weight. I would still consider this the most annoying solution though, because it would still require you to specifically build gear sets to use sword and shield in anything other than heavy, which no other weapon requires. Additionally, I also believe especially the Ice Gauntlet as a blocking weapon should be looked at. With a Greatsword I can somewhat understand it because in heavy tanking it falls behind the tower shield and it is meant to be a tank weapon too, but the Ice Gauntlet already has in two many ways, so it is massively on the survivability side when it comes to any mage weapons. I don't think it needs to have such a high block stability in addition to the blocking stamina perk. Or maybe just give the shield tree some better blocking perks that make it more appealing. I also believe there should be more freedom when it comes to crafting perks on shield. I don't know why that's so restricted, why they haven't really been updated and only been getting the defensive perks when some shields are clearly used offensively. So that one is just strange to me and I think it needs to be looked at in general. Now you may say at this point, if you want to run a more damage oriented sword build, then why don't you just run it without a shield? The issues here are twofold. On one hand, the damage output of the sword on its own is simply not enough without the extra perks on the shield. It is heavily reliant on having these extra perks to keep up in damage output with other weapons. On the other hand, an even bigger problem is that you cannot use any of the right skill tree perks like for example shield bash if you don't have a shield equipped. You can only use the left tree skills. The left skill tree actually has a ton of different issues when it comes to damage output, usability of abilities and so on. Some are basically not worth using. If you want to hear more about that in particular, I made a whole video discussing this, so I'll link that right here and you can check it out. I'm also hoping that in the next days we'll see an update to the whole armor weight story in form of a forum post about the upcoming PTR changes, so when that happens I will of course let you know. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell to stay updated. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth out.